This is our Disney News Hour, and many thanks for watching us with the news. I'm Shifara Olakao. Prosperity Party has unveiled its election manifesto and candidacy for the sixth national election in the presence of the party's president, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. Premier Abiy said the symbol is a beacon of hope and a sign that it is possible to move toward prosperity. Kazam Chane presents the story as follows. The unveiling of election manifesto and its logo of Prosperity Party at the forum today. Under the theme, multinationalism, brotherhood for common prosperity is a remarkable step to compete for six national election. The event has highlighted Prosperity Party of today and tomorrow that has facilitated and brought together millions of Ethiopians with membership and born in change is committed to change and shines a light of hope. Announcing the party's election manifesto, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed said, party's election symbol is a light bulb and that indicates the nation is moving from darkness to light. This manifesto of prosperity is not a contract but a promise. The policy document is not an essay. The prosperity manifesto is a pact between the people and the party, not a contract. It is not a contract between us and our people. It is a covenant between us and our people. Promise and contract are two different things. Because the contract is based on bilateral agreement, when one fails to do so, it falls apart. But a covenant is based on mutual commitment, one is weak, the other is helpless, and it requires participation of all. This covenant is based on the commitment and service of every member of prosperity. It is a place where we can deliver the Ethiopia we want to our generation in collaboration with our people. Yes, Senate. This document is not an essay. Many are writing essays, but the policy cannot be an essay. Manifesto is not an essay. It's not a one-year affair. It's a document that we go to for our commitment, including extensive data collection, analysis, and lessons learned. So far, a month or two, just saying that I have a policy. It doesn't make sense. The policy should be prepared as a document, not an essay. Prosperity does what it says. It ends with this beginning. We have shown this in the past big projects, and we kept our word. This is exactly what happened at the Renaissance Dam. And we have made good progress so that the people can see the light because they need light. According to the Prime Minister, the party can transform the country to the desired prosperity only when it works day and night with the people, adding they will work hard as a prosperous party. The sixth national election, though the policies and strategies are put here in the manifesto very clear, our basic desire is conducting the election freely and democratically that enables Ethiopia and Ethiopians a winner in the election. That means peaceful, democratic, and where every citizen could participate and must be based on the high ideals to win and come to power. Prosperity Party President Abiy Ahmed Father pinpointed that his party is committed to make the sixth national election free, fair and democratic and conveyed a message that the party is committed to this and other parties to follow the same commitment. Ethiopian Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Demeka Mekonen, together with senior officials from both Ethiopia and Turkey, have jointly inaugurated the newly built Ethiopian Embassy building in Ankara. The Turkish Foreign Minister said on the occasion the inauguration of the building of the embassy headquarters will have a crucial role in cementing ties between Turkey and Ethiopia. Jamaica also highlighted the inauguration of the embassy is a great stride to move forward the relations of the two sides to a higher step. Here is what he said. It gives me great pleasure to be here with you today in the historic city of Ankara for the inauguration of the new Ethiopian embassy building. The construction of this embassy signifies the long-standing relationship between Ethiopia and Turkey and symbolize a great accomplishment for both countries. Therefore, I thank all those who participated and took part in its 
successful completion. The embassy will not have the sole purpose of being a place where diplomats come to work. Rather, it will also be a place where the two countries promote their culture and draw their people closer. It is my hope that the embassy will serve as a good step forward towards enhancing our bilateral relations. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Ethiopia and Turkey enjoy an all-weather friendship and all-around cooperation. The growth momentum of the Ethiopia-Turkey strategic partnership has strengthened the relationship of the two countries and brought them closer. Over the years, the two governments have exchanged numerous high-level visits that produced very important outcomes which helped to expedite the development of joint cooperation on both sides. Development of joint cooperation, Ethiopia is ready to deepen the all-round cooperation with Turkey. We like to work more closely with Turkey to overcome and alleviate poverty in Ethiopia. Now moving to news in connection with the victory of Adwa. The victory of Adwa is believed to be one of the decisive historic curves that broke the divide and rule rhetoric by European imperialists. The black victory over a well-trained white army was also the major factor that shocked European imperialists and forced them to think of other diplomatic alternatives. Solomon Dam tells you more on that. The name Adwa was barely known, or at least not as popular as it is now, some 125 years back. But the vivid history that took place under the steep mountains of Adwa makes the name unforgettable for both white colonialists and black people who endure coercion for long. Ethiopian black soldiers and patriots bravely fought with a well-trained white Italian army at one of the most dramatic battles with the black heroes defeating the invaders. The victory of Ethiopians in the Battle of Adwa ultimately altered the course of the history of black people and forced white imperialists to think differently about the black race. Ethiopians defeated a well-trained and disciplined Italian army at the Battle of Adwa. The victory was not simply a victory of battlefield, it was more than that. Our forefathers made Italians believe that the only way to forge a relationship with Ethiopia was through a diplomatic means. It was also a real turning point for all black people around the globe to think that a black army can defeat a white army. That triggers many to stand for their freedom and liberty. Every historian who got the chance to study black history usually comes to a conclusion that a victory of Adwa was the main juncture for whites and blacks to start a new form of relationship apart from compulsion. The victory reinvigorated humanity to flourish. It asserted equality. Whites were made to believe that forging a diplomatic relationship with Ethiopia was the new normal. Ethiopia was the first African country that a European nation was interested in to having an embassy. Italy itself became the first to open its embassy in Addis Ababa. Then Germany, Britain, France and America followed suit. A victory was also a remedy of divide and rule rhetoric that imperialists were implementing in their colonies to easily maneuver with their nefarious administrations. Divide and rule strategy disaffected Demented by the Adwa victory, Italians returned back to Ethiopia minutes later with their evil divide and rule strategy. 
They tried to create hostility between ethnic lines and religious division. They tirelessly work on cajoling Muslims and ethnic Oromos to cooperate with them. But it was brave Oromo fighters like Karasuduki and Jagama Kelo who resisted their rule in Central Shoah. The divide and rule strategy worked in other African nations, but it was impossible here in Ethiopia. Adwa remains the major black victory over a white army in the history of mankind. In another story, the victory of Adwa refuted the wrong narratives circulated by the Europeans that Africa was not that civilized. This remark was made by the assistant professor and lecturer Dr. Jill Humphreys. The American scholar also says the victory gave the lesson for the black people of the whole world the fact that they are capable of winning back their freedom Western colonizers forcefully had taken. The story is presented as follows. The African-American assistant professor, educator, and lecturer has spent some time with ETV English. Outlining the major victories the Battle of Adwa brought for Africa and the black diaspora across the globe. She says the fact that Ethiopia has never been colonized by the Westerns galvanized other African friends to fight for their freedoms. Ethiopia, as you already know, was never formally colonized by um, a European country may have been occupied for a very brief period of time, a few years, but never formally colonized. What does that mean psychologically for Africa, but also for the, I think, global black world and diaspora? Is that there is, a, there is an ability to um, fend off, right, um, aggression, um, to maintain one's cultural values and roots. I want to say, walking around Ethiopia, um, I see cultural practices that have been retained for thousands of years, right, precisely because they were not colonized, precisely your country was not colonized. Um, young people may not understand that or, or realize that. Um, and so psychologically that, that plays a, um, a great role for those of us who cannot trace our ancestry because of enslavement, right, but can look to an African country and say, here's a country um, that not only fended off uh, and uh, European powers, but also became the center of Pan-Africanism because all of the major institutions, Pan-African institutions that were established under Hali, Emperor Haile Selassie, like the Organization of African Unity, which is now the African Union, are incredible important institutions for Africans to decide how they want to um, see the future and develop the future across every political area, policy area. That's important. She also argues that Ethiopia, being the source of mankind, also refuted the erroneous narratives that Africa was not developed. Ethiopia, being an African country, right, at that time in 1896 or the late 1890s, um, Africa was perceived as not as advanced as Europe. So that's the, the first misnomer, given that this is the humanity or the cradle of civilization. Um, and so for an African country or kingdom to be able to amass, as I was reading, over 100 and something thousand um, soldiers, uh, not both men and women, um, I read that Empress uh, Taita, Taita, Taitu, thank you, played an important role as well as other women, right, that was able to mobilize um, throughout Ethiopia to fight this invasion. Um, and so I think, of course, for Ethiopians, it's a way to establish national identity right, around a common cause, regardless of one's ethnic identity. And then I think for Africa, of course, it's significant because during this period, this is the period of European colonization. The transatlantic slave trade began around the 1500s, 1600s. But this is another period where European countries, right, are asserting themselves in control, physically control of African countries. She has advised Ethiopians to take the initiative to properly promote this landslide victory to the whole world in light of the various battles they have waged for their freedoms. Now in business, Go Organic campaign initiated by the Ethiopian in-flight catering has become new feature for Ethiopian airlines. 
The campaign has aimed to promote organic food and drinks eat European serves on board as a unique competitive advantage. Jerusalem Batsia presents the story as follows. Ethiopian Airlines allocates 1 billion birr for expense to agricultural inputs annually. However, the airliner has been using only about 10% of agricultural inputs from local products. That's why Ethiopian Airlines has launched Fly Ethiopian Go Organic campaign. This special campaign is expected to create an opportunity to promote the local agricultural animal products and other catering inputs that are being used to prepare meals served on board. It also gives market opportunity that Ethiopian created for local producers. This means a lot, especially for all our colleagues at in-flight catering. They have been working very hard for more than a year now to make sure that all the ingredients, all the materials are direct from the farm to the kitchen. So organic means a lot in today's world. In 21st century, global society, gastronomy has an important place in every person's, in everybody's life. So we are focusing on gastronomy and we are focusing on organic and uh, healthy foods on board. On top of highlighting the organic and healthy meal experience, it's believed that passengers will enjoy as they fly Ethiopian. We have been working hard not only for our guests to experience the organic meal that Ethiopian serves on board, but we have a plan to promote our Ethiopian organic foods to be comfortable to all based on international meal standard. We have vast experience and knowledge of nutrition and food in our country, but it has to be done in this manner to be benefited. Therefore, this campaign is expected to create a platform in promoting Ethiopia's indigenous and diverse foods globally. Ethiopian Airlines has been working to increase its capacity to use Ethiopian indigenous products by 25% for its customers. Turkish ambassador to Ethiopia Yaprak Alp reaffirms commitment of her country to expanding its investment in Ethiopia, which already add up to billions of dollars. Turkey's investment in Ethiopia currently stands at $2.5 billion, Yaprak Alp told Anna Dulu Agency. Turkey is the second largest investor in Ethiopia after China, with its state-of-the-art textile industries and cable manufacturing firms. The ambassador's remarks came in connection to Ethiopian Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Demek Amekonen's visit to Turkey. Now, in our continental news, the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Africa CDC, will deploy an advanced emergency response support team of experts in Guinea to help the country fight a new Ebola virus outbreak. The Africa CDC said it is closely monitoring the situation and will continue to mobilize its expertise and resources to support the response. Guinea has so far reported seven Ebola cases and three fatalities. There have also been fresh cases of Ebola in the Democratic Republic of Congo in its north Kivu province. The 2014 to 2016 West Africa Ebola virus outbreaks claimed over 11,300 lives with over 28,600 recorded cases.